Hello. Hi. That was great. So that was awesome. Uh, I'm Stephen Patrick Bell. I am a black male. I use he, him pronouns. I'm wearing uh, round black glasses, sort of squiggly black things on a white shirt. And behind me is a gray wall with two pieces by a Nigerian artist, Dennis Osidebe. I'll be reading from my novel in progress. I've been calling it The Placeholders. And you shouldn't need to know too much about this because this is very early. Accompanied in our home by this great new absence, I learned and relearned how to do too many new and old things at once. I learned how to pick out a suit someone else would wear without any of their input. I learned how to distract with plants. I learned which flowers spoke to the right amount of mournfulness and elegance. I learned how to write brief but appropriately poignant thank you cards. I learned how to take a call without having a conversation. It's certainly tough, yes, but it gets easier. I'm getting better at this. Would you like another platitude? I learned how to make others feel okay when they noticed my eyes grew too wet after too close a question. I learned how to ignore his family until they existed only in photos. I learned which drawers I use least. I learned how, all on my own, to flip and rotate the mattress. I learned how much wine it took to obliterate a thought. I learned how to focus on the lump in my throat to force it down and cage it in the ribs before it forced its way out as a scream. To choose a place to scatter ashes, to abandon a succulent, to recognize rage, to smooth rough rage into stony stoicism, to explain the gap in my resume, to sell a boat. Lightning quick, I got very good at everything. I'd heard on a podcast that our emotions are no different from other sensory input, that this sporadic fluttering in my gut was just a mechanical somatic response. I meditated on glaciers melting, icebergs dwindling to sea foam, diamond clear lakes rendered from the cold, hard, unrelenting, scraping determination of the notion of what might have been. I was visited by warm memories, and then I was haunted by them. Inside him, under him, our fingers entwined, Behind my closed eyes, I could see quite clearly an image of us together. A steady trickle of ice water crept and settled behind my navel as I realized too late, I had dreamily murmured, I think I could grow to love you. My eyes snap open. Lucas shifts, slifting, shifting and sliding off of me, sending shutters up through me that make it difficult to conceal my trepidation. The room is too brightly lit to obscure our faces. He fixes me with a look with eyes too wet, too blue, too much like ice in springtime before he says, this is going to end quite badly, isn't it? And then he laughs. He does it so easily, makes a sound that exists so far away from any burden, and he chuckles, I think I could grow to love you too. A bit of me slipped out of him, pulled, slid, slick and shuddery down the crack of my ass and puddled on the duvet. There hadn't been time to fold it down to make a nest. And now, awash in the endorphin-rich bath of bliss, there was only time for nesting. Inside one another, pulsing, drying, tasting, flowing, rushing, crusting over with crystalline and salty musk, there was only now. I added celery to my shopping list. I crawled off my yoga mat to discover the house was swallowing me, devouring the edges of my precious self so completely that I bled into the carpets, the paintings, the crystal bowl we found in Lisbon but never found the right spot for. There is no boundary between me and everything else without the boundary of him. Something about this signaled I was at capacity. There was little more I could process. I called my sister, she was helpful. Rather than overflow, go off kilter, crack, spasm, or weep, I simply stopped. The bills were paid, the arrangements made, the mail forwarded. I did the math and discovered that, provided I keep working, continue to earn my bonuses, I could exist in a state of suspended animation for 22 months. I decided I would press pause for 18 months. I thought about a lot. I joined a gym nearby. I had the housekeepers cover all the furniture in white sheets and asked them to come to the house less often. The place felt like a theme park haunted mansion full of cartoon ghosts, white sheets fluttering in the drafts. Friends ate meals with me. We flashed teeth at each other, slurped oysters, cat cowed, cracked cold knuckles in the smoky lakeside air by fire pits. We ranted, raved, invented. We may have cried. I dated. 
played at dating, arranged play dates, was shocked by what dating had become. I felt hundreds of greasy thumbs sweeping across my face, the abs I conjured with clever lighting, the ass I built with grief-fueled high-intensity training sessions. Through it all, I kept finding chewed up bits of Lucas's fingernails around the house. Months after he died, they would show up in the strangest places. I reached into a drawer, searching for an old wallet, and the little white arcs of not quite flesh in the dusty corner seemed to spell out the number of the realtor I'd been thinking of calling. I did call him. He showed me a lot. I thought about fucking him, a pla palate cleanser, and quickly ruled it out when he complimented me, or he felt he did, clasping my wrist after I signed the lease by informing me that, while he doesn't normally date Black guys, he'd make an exception for me. Thank you.